We begin today with one of the legislature's steadier hands moving up to the Senate when they reconvene in January. He's also one of the funniest men in politics, Assemblyman John Bramnick. Good to see you, Assemblyman. Welcome. Good morning, David. So the Associated Press uh, has called the race for Governor Murphy, but Jack Cittarelli has not yet conceded. We're hearing now from, from Cittarelli and other Republicans that we need to, quote, count every legal vote. We heard that language after the 2020 election with Trump. We're over 56,000 votes separating these two guys on Friday morning. Is this race over and should Jack Cittarelli concede? Well, I don't have any problem with somebody looking closely at the votes. I mean, Jack's not saying it was stolen. He's not saying it was fraud, not the stuff that Trump did, which was crazy. He's just saying, you know, it's a close election. Let's make sure all the votes are counted. You know, it's a four-year term. You know, that's not a terrible thing to do. I don't I don't think he's rejecting any process at all. So I think it's it's not unreasonable. So I mean, what's what's reasonable then? If next week all the votes get counted, should he ask for a recount? Once again, I'm not an expert on counting votes. I mean, I'm not seeing fraud, but what I'm saying is I don't think that's the issue. It looks like he can't recover here with the numbers that are down. But when you have millions of votes and it's a fifty thousand dollar fifty thousand dollar fifty thousand vote margin, you can understand why they want to look closely at it. I mean, I don't think that's a Trumpism, to be honest with you. I think it's you know it's a fair look at the you know at the returns. Maybe not on the part of Jack Cittarelli, but we're seeing a lot of stuff already online. People saying something akin to "Stop the steal" in New Jersey. I'm hearing from you that you sense that that's not constructive right now. But not only is it not constructive, it's a small amount of crazy people. And I think that hurts the Republican Party. I think it's a very, very, very small group. The truth of the matter, and then people are upset about mail-in voting. Like somehow, you know, vote by mail is fraud. But, you know, some, these are the same people who would have voted. They just didn't go to the polls. So when we say, oh, we lost vote by mail, really? We lost because there's too many Democrats. I and. Guess what? They voted early, but there's no evidence of fraud. I'm tired of that nonsense. Just do the right thing and act reasonable. And guess what? We might win. All right. If results uh, stay as they are and this ends up being just a very close race at the top of the ticket, the question is, why was this so close uh, with all the polls predicting a pretty easy Murphy victory? Well, you had a red hurricane, meaning a red wave, sometimes they call it meaning there was a lot of anti-Biden sentiment because obviously he's turned around and he's, he's underwater in the polls. Uh, Murphy was too far to the left. This was a reaction of the middle of New Jersey. The pendulum continues to swing back and forth in politics. Look at every election, every election's reaction to the last election. So in this case, Murphy went too far to the left. His own party, a lot of people in his own party said, hey, you went too far to the left. The Republicans were energized because now you had Biden as the president. What I think they missed in the polls is the energy in the Republican Party, energy with independence and kind of reaction to an administration that way went way out of bounds. So we've been talking to the pollsters uh, all week and they all say we missed that red wave and that uh, there was a result of Republicans not just participating in polls. Are Republicans in a silo in New Jersey as far as that goes? Well, I don't really understand how the polls work exactly, but it is hard to measure energy and enthusiasm. And I think that's normally where pollsters make a mistake because they reach 300 people or 600 people. And sometimes it's hard to test that kind of passion. And I think that's what they miss. Testing passion should be the most important question, I think, in a poll. And also, which way the wind is blowing. I don't know how you test which way the wind is blowing and how hard the wind is blowing against you, but those are the things I think pollsters are going to have to look at in the future. Hmm. All right, let me get a couple of uh, panel questions in here. Charlie, you had a question? Yeah, uh, John, I mean, what can the Republican Party um learn from Cittarelli's uh, near win, if you will, um, as it moves forward and tries to rebuild itself under the shadow of Trump, because Trump isn't going to go anywhere. 
he's still going to be an albatross on the party's neck. So how, how, how do you, what's the formula and what, what lessons you can learn from Tuesday that um, help make the uh, GOP in Jersey more relevant? Well, I think Trump is going away and it's evident by what happened down in Virginia. And you could see that everyone was distancing themselves from Trump. Trump wasn't in Jersey. He really wasn't embraced in Virginia. Uh, he's going to be in the rear view mirror. I've always said to the people, listen, you know, most of the time people are voting against something. So they were voting against Trump. Now they're kind of <laughs> voting against Democrats to go too far to the left. I think that will be the issue. Trump will be farther and farther in the rearview mirror. I don't even think he could win a primary. I think the Republican Party understands that he's not helpful. And it's just taking a little longer because people fear Trump because he, he is always... Uh, he's always scaring people. He don't scare me. <laughs> Colleen, you want to jump in here with a question? Yeah, John, I just wanted to ask you from your perspective now where you're going forward, you know, you're going to be going from being the boss in your caucus in the assembly to just kind of another senator. Um, how do you think you're going to, you know, how are you going to feel about that? And uh, what do you expect your role to be? Well, first of all, I feel pretty good because I have 10 years as the leader. I'm not sure you understand. When you're the leader, you got to travel the entire state and keep everybody happy, right? When you have to keep everybody happy, that may be contributing, that may be meetings down in South Jersey and North Jersey. You know, uh, 10 years is plenty to be the leader. Interestingly enough, the title senator, it's a, people come up to me, oh my God, congratulations, you're now a senator. I was the Republican leader in the House, right? They go like this. Uh, they don't know what that is. Which assembly of God are you with? Or what do you assemble? But when you say senator, they go, what happened to Menendez and Booker? And how often are you going to be in Washington? The title helps you in terms of, you know, it's less people in the Senate. I think you can do a, a lot of things in the Senate. Uh, so I, I'm not terribly worried about being in the back row. I think uh, my voice will be heard anyway. All right. So assuming the results stay as they are at the top of the ticket, the biggest news coming out of the election is the apparent defeat of Senate President Steve Sweeney by an unknown truck driver named Edward Durr. What do you think happened there, Assemblyman? First of all, I love Steve, good friend, but he got out blue collared. Uh, historically, Steve Sweeney was this blue collar uh, iron worker in a district that was a red district that voted for Trump. And all of a sudden, somebody came along that out blue collared him in a district that really is a Republican district, in a storm or in a hurricane of a red wave. I don't care how much money you throw at that red wave when you have this kind of blue collar, simple approach, uh, it worked and it worked because there was very little Steve could do to stop that. And now you have Edward Durr, who a lot of people are waking up this week and finding that he's the guy who's to the right of Mike Doherty. Are you concerned that some of what uh, Ed Durr has said in the past is going to come back to haunt him and further taint the party? Well, there are some comments that are deeply disturbing, but he was voted in by that district. So what we have to understand is when that district votes in this blue collar so-called conservative, that he will be a voice in Trenton. But we don't have the majority in the Senate. We don't have the majority in the assembly and there's still a democratic governor as far as I can see. So it may be a Republican voice, but I don't think it's changing the nature of politics in Trenton. All right, good stuff. John Bramnick, Senator elect, uh, a little downtime before the holidays, then back at it. Uh, good to see you, man. Thanks for coming on. Great to see everybody. Have a great day.